Danger, Dr. Danfield. Anita, why didn't you tell me? Tell you? You what? You killed him, Anita. Not a chance of proving you didn't. Fred, stop it. I'll go to the electric chair. I'll... On a quiet side street in the suburban town of Crestview, the occupant of a comfortable-looking home is startled by the sudden ringing of a telephone. Yeah. Hello? Fred. Fred, is that you? Oh, it's you, Anita. So, look, where the devil have you been? Fred, I'm in... Oh, thank heavens he hasn't gotten there yet. Who hasn't gotten here yet? What are you talking about? Fred, listen to me. I just saw Henry. Who? Henry. Your twin brother, Henry. You're crazy. No, I'm not. I saw him. He's wearing his uniform and he's on his way out to the house. I know he is. You're out of your mind. Henry's dead. He was killed in the South Pacific. Everybody knows that. Fred, stop being so stubborn. I know it was Henry. Who else would know better than I? Don't you realize what this means? Yeah, I know what it means. Henry, know you saw him? No. He was getting into a cab. I heard him give our address. Fred, he... He must know about it. He must. Why must he? Well, don't you see? He went to Hampton first and found me gone and the household. He probably tried to find you then and, and put two and two together. Yeah, and maybe he did it bad. Somehow he found out, huh? Yes. Fred, what are we going to do? I don't know, baby. It depends. Where are you calling from? I'm in a drugstore downtown. And that means that Henry... Wait a minute, baby. Wait a minute. Fred! Fred, where are you? What's happened? It's Henry, baby. He's at the door. You'd better get out here as soon as you can. Come out there. Fred, should I? Yes, you should. You've got to face this thing sooner or later. Come on out, baby. All right, Fred. I... I'll be out. Make it fast, baby. So long. Yeah, what's on your... Henry. Can't be. Hello, Fred. Surprised to see me? I'll say I am, Henry. Come on in. I, I thought you were... Dead? What made you think that, Fred? Why, the... Well, the reports we got... Who's we, Fred? Why, uh, Anita and I. Oh, Anita and you. Mm -hmm. Nice place you've got here, Fred. Mind if I sit down? Of course not. What did the report say, Fred? Why, uh, they said that you were... Did they say that I was dead, Fred? Well, no, not exactly. You see, that's all I wanted to know. Brother. This, what do you mean by that? Crime? You know what I mean, Fred. I don't have to explain anything. It's you who's got to do the explaining. I don't get it. Where's Anita, Fred? Anita? How should I know? She's living here with you, isn't she? Now, wait a minute. Take it easy. When that report came in, I'd been taken prisoner by the Japs. You sold her the idea that she'd never hear from me again, didn't you? Now, wait a minute. Henry. Wait a minute. You wanted her so badly that you couldn't wait until I was officially declared dead, could you? No, you I... You talked her into selling my place at Hampton. And changing your name and coming here to live with you, did you? You're off the beam, I said, Henry. Anita and I are legally married. Married? <laughs> married. Yes, I've got the certificate. I've got it right here in the married. house. Married. <laughs> Look, now let me get this straight. You both changed your names and got married, pretending to be someone else. Oh, Fred, you killed me. Well, we thought it would be better that way. Under the circumstances? Under the circumstances. Now, that's certainly a butte. <laughs> yes, sir, that's about the funniest thing I've ever heard. Now, what makes it funnier? You look as though you actually believe you can get away with it. We can't get away with it. Really, Fred? How? By shooting me with that gun you've got in your pocket? Why, Watch you... this, Fred. See? There's a gun in my hand. And it got there quickly, didn't it? You didn't even see where it came from, did you? Henry, you're not... The thing is, Fred, you've become too sure of yourself. You forgot that I'd be apt to know more about guns than you. 
I've known nothing except guns for four long years, Fred. I know how to handle them. And I know how to shoot. Henry, you wouldn't... You wouldn't shoot me in cold blood. No, Fred. No, I wouldn't. I'm sick of killing. Sick of guns, fighting, and physical suffering. I'm through with it for good. Glad you feel that way, Henry. Yes. Yes, I can see you are. <laughs> ah, you fool. You think you've won, don't you? You think you've accomplished your purpose. Henry, wait. What are you going to do? Just what you think, Fred. Stay where you are. No. If I let you go, you... Keep away from me, you fool. If you get this... No, I'm going to be better than going up. No, no will it? Well, it's not going to be like that. No. We go. We don't see you. In a moment, we return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. That's it, baby. Fooled you, didn't I? Thought at first I was my twin brother, Henry. Fred, where's... Where's Henry? Henry? Well, he's right over there. <laughs> Henry! Henry! He's dead. He... He's wearing your clothes. Oh, his... His face is all... Fred, what have you done? The answer to that is simple, baby. Found out about us. Tried to kill me. I defended myself, that's all. Murdered him. Murdered your own brother. Now, wait a minute, baby. Take it easy. We're in this together. Together? Why, sure. You wouldn't have wanted Henry to go to the police and tell him about your changing your name and marrying me when you already had a husband, would you? He wouldn't. He wouldn't have done that. No? You wouldn't want the cops to know about you selling the house and the securities and turning the door over to me, would you? Fred, this is awful. It isn't so awful, baby. Just quit being excited. I'll tell you how we're going to work it out. Work it out? Sure. Look, if we just left Henry here in his uniform and scrammed, we wouldn't have a chance, see? The way I got it figured, we're going to have plenty of a chance. How? It's easy. I'm Henry, see? I just got home. You're my wife. We got pace to prove it. But... How about Henry? <laughs> Who'd recognize Henry with his face smashed up like that and wearing those clothes? <laughs> Why, Henry's just some guy we found dead on the living room floor when we got home after you met me at the station. We don't know anything about who he is. It won't work. There'll be an investigation. They'll find out. Sure, there'll be an investigation, baby, but not till we're in the clear. Look. I'm a returned veteran who just got out of the hospital a while ago. Tonight, I have to report back to my boat. Henry had all the papers in his pocket to prove it. He had a good record. They can call anybody to check. And you think they'll let us go? They sure they will. Why not? Just don't leave town, I'll say. Keep in touch with us for a few days. Get it? A few days. So we'll meet, baby. A few days. Oh, it's too risky. We'll never get away with it. We gotta get away with it, baby. We got to. No other way. I. Oh, I. I suppose you're right. Sure, I am. Sure, I am. Now let's get ready. Pick up that gun and place it near Henry's body. I'll call the police. <laughs> uh, 
And neither of you touched anything after you found the murdered body. Is that correct, Commander? Yes. I found you immediately. Is this Dr. Dan Field, a crime psychologist? Yes, and Miss uh, Rusty Fairfax. How do you do? How do you do? Well, Doc, it looks to me as though this were a puzzle we'd have to work out by ourselves, unless you have some questions that you want to ask the commander. How long did you plan to remain here at home, Commander Evans? Unfortunately, I'm supposed to report back to my boat tonight. I have my orders here. Imagine I'll be free in a day or two. Mm-hmm. Let's see. It's uh, now two o'clock. Do you mind if I ask you one or two questions? Not at all. Glad to do anything I can to help. Fine. Now, as I understand it, you and Mrs. Evans were living in the town of Hampton when you entered the service. Yes, that's right. Mrs. Evans had a chance to sell our property at a very decent profit. She did so after first writing me about it, of course, and then bought the place here in Crestview. I see. According to the papers we found in the dead man's pocket, his name is Robinson. Did you ever know a man named Robinson, Commander? Well, there are probably a lot of Robinsons in the Navy. I must have known some of them, but none intimately. Mm, no. Well, uh, thank you for answering my question. Oh, by the way, most returning servicemen manage to salvage a gun or two. Do you have a gun, Commander? Well, yes. It's one in my grip. It's a forty-five. Of course, if you care to look at it... Oh, no, no, no. That won't be necessary at all. As a matter of fact, I... Re oh, here's Mrs. Evans. Feeling better, darling? Yes. Could have these the policemen? Yes. Miss Fairfax, Dr. Danfield, Captain Notice, I... I want you to meet Mrs. Evans. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Evans? Uh, this experience must be distressing to you, Mrs. Evans, after waiting four years to see your husband. Not a very pleasant homecoming for him. It's terrible. Will be necessary. I mean, how long... I understand how you feel. We'll not bother you any longer than necessary. Uh, Doc, are you all through? Yes. Yes. Oh, one more thing. It uh, might be a good idea to take Mr. and Mrs. Evans' fingerprints, just as a matter of routine, you know. Oh, fingerprints? Now, don't get alarmed, darling. It's a customary procedure. But I don't see that. That's all right. The least we can do is cooperate. The quicker we get these things over with, the sooner we'll be free to enjoy my homecoming. Oh, that's very decent of you, Commander. But, uh, but you don't understand. I... Something wrong, Mrs. Evans? No, no, I... I... Anita, what's the matter with you? Why are you stumbling over your words? If you have something to say, say it. I don't blame her a bit. I'm sure if I came home and found a dead man lying on the floor of my living room, I'd stumble over my words, too. Thank you, Miss Fairfax. Don't worry, Mrs. Evans. Everything's going to be all right. These men are so used to this sort of thing that they're unfeeling about it. You're right, Miss Fairfax. I'm sorry, darling. Here, let me pour you a glass of water. Well, I'm glad you came along, Rusty. A woman's viewpoint is always important. Oh, Captain, suppose while you're down at headquarters picking up the fingerprint equipment, Rusty and I remain here and sort of browse around. Why, sure, only... I'm uh... sure Commander and Mrs. Evans won't mind, and uh, we might pick up a clue that will tell us something further. Further? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I see what you mean, Doc. Well, that's a good idea. Well, I'll start along. If you need any help, well, just give me a ring. <laughs> Here behind the house, anyway. The murder took place inside. Not there, so there. Let's take a look in this rubbish barrel. What do you expect to find in there? Possibly something, possibly nothing. Well, that's a bright answer. Well, yeah, look here. There is a bloodstained cloth. Several bloodstained cloths. But it's quite fresh, too. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Hmm, it's a lady's handkerchief. Certainly is. The initials on it are A E. A E. <coughs> Well, that could stand for Anita Evans. Couldn't it, though? Think a minute now. Glenn, you don't believe the truth. I'm beginning to believe a lot of things, Rusty. I wonder if Mrs. Evans was stumbling over her words when we were inside the house because she was upset or because she was afraid to have her fingerprints taken. Glenn, you don't really think Mrs. Evans committed the murder. Don't I, Rusty? Now then, supposing that it was the murderer who tried to hide these bloodstained claws, would he waste time going back to lock the door before taking flight? The answer to that one is obviously no. I think so, too. Well, I'm glad you agree, Rust. Now, let's go one step further. Suppose when Commander Evans landed in New York, he called his wife long distance, told her he was on his way to Crestview, and asked her to meet him at the station. Well? Well, suppose Mr. Robinson was, shall we say, calling on Mrs. Evans at the moment. Previously, he hadn't known that she had a husband. Suppose more... you stop letting your imagination run away. Mrs. Evans could shoot anyone. Really? Rusty, I want you to do something rather important. Sure, what is it? We're going back into the house. 
I want you to carry on with your we women understand each other idea and insist that Mrs. Evans go to her bedroom and lie down. All right, but why? First, I'm going to call Captain Otis at headquarters. Then I want to have a talk with Commander Evans. I think if he's asked the proper questions, he'll unwittingly give me the information that will pin this murder on his wife. <laughs> In a moment, we return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... And now back to our star, Michael Dunn, for the third act of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Frankly, Dan Field, I don't like your implication. If you think that Anita had I'm any sorry, Commander. To... The last thing I want to do is arouse your animosity. A willingness to cooperate is much more important. I'm willing to cooperate. But when you come to a man and imply that his wife is a murderess, it's a little bit too much to take. But if your wife were a murderess, you'd want justice done, wouldn't you? Would you, if it were your wife? If she'd been unfaithful to me, I would. Take that back, Dan Field. Sorry. I see I'm off on the wrong track. I'll begin over again. Common sense must tell you that the person who murdered Robinson must have had access to this house. Yes, I suppose that's true. And you must admit that this bloody handkerchief is rather incriminating evidence. I imagine the police will call it incriminating. Yes. Yes, they will. Now then, Mrs. Evans said she was away from the house two hours. Does it sound reasonable that she would leave two hours before train time when the station is only ten minutes away? Stop it, Anfield. I don't want to hear any more. I'm only trying to prepare you for what might happen, Commander. You haven't seen your wife for four years. I know, I know. I've tried not to think about it. I I just can't believe that Anita would do don't anything. Pour yourself like that. a shot of that bourbon. Yeah. yeah. I can use a drink. This job I have isn't easy or pleasant, Commander. It was you who accused your wife of stumbling over her words when the matter of the fingerprints came up. Remember? That meant nothing. What are you getting at? I think your wife was afraid to have her fingerprints. Now, Dan Phil, you're asking me to believe too much on too little evidence. Oh, we have a lot more evidence than you think, Commander. You have more evidence? Yes. For example, I just talked to Captain Otis on the phone. He went to the trouble of checking and discovered that you didn't arrive at the railroad station until 12.15 this noon. Well, your wife claims that she left the house at approximately 10.15. Now, suppose the police medical examiner discovers that Robinson was murdered before 10.15. I don't get it. Well, if Robinson were murdered before 10.15, that means your wife must have either murdered him or known the dead body was lying on the living room floor. You see, she also stated that up until 10.15, she was here in the house, alone. I see what you mean. Danfield, you don't know what this means to me. I still can't believe it. Would you like to see some more evidence? More evidence? Yes. Come into the living room, please, Commander. Now, look up there on the wall near the ceiling. Where? It's a bullet hole. Yes. You see, two shots were fired instead of one. Two shots? Apparently, there was quite a struggle, too. We checked the gun, which you said was in your grip, Commander. Your what? Just a matter of routine. Captain Ost insists on being thorough, yet at the same time, he has the faculty of not alarming anyone. That's why he checked the gun himself instead of asking you to show it to him. I see. Just what did he gain by checking my gun? Nothing. As clean as a whistle, not even loaded. <sighs> so, you see, we've considered every angle. And furthermore... Well, that must be the captain now. I'll let him in. Well, Captain, I've been waiting for you. Oh, hello, Doc. I'm sorry I'm late. There's a lot to do. Oh, hello, Commander. Look here, Captain. Danfield's been telling me about... about my wife. That... Well, well, it's hard for me to believe... Yes, that. yes, I understand. I asked Doc if he'd try to explain things to you. Such jobs are easier for him than they are for me. Oh, thanks, Doc, for the favor. Not at all, Captain. And now I'm afraid I've got some more bad news for you, Commander. More bad? Oh, hello, Miss Fairfax. Come in. And uh, Mrs. Evans, too. Hello, Captain. We heard the doorbell, and Mrs. Evans wanted to come down. Darling, is everything all right? Anita, I... 
I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What do you mean? Perhaps you'd better let me say it, Commander. Mrs. Evans, we checked the fingerprints on the gun and found that they were yours. Found that they were mine? Oh, no. Wait a minute, Captain. How could you do that when you hadn't taken Anita's fingerprints? That's something else we did, Commander, without trying to alarm anyone. Captain Otis took the glass from which your wife had drunk some water when we first arrived here. Let's see. Anita, why didn't you tell me? Tell you? Tell you what? I'm sorry, Anita. Four years is a long time, but Bill, I never... stop it! You can't mean what you're saying. Wish I didn't, Anita. I wish there weren't all this damning evidence. Evidence? You, I mean. Yes, Anita. I'll go to the electric chair. Fred, you don't realize. I'm sorry, Mrs. Thing. Evans. I'm afraid there's very little you can say that will help you now. There is. I mean, it was Fred who shot him, not I. Anita, you're wasting your time, Mrs. Evans. We've already checked and found Commander Evans was on the train when Robinson was killed. No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was here. I. Can I wouldn't think. try to say any more, Mrs. Evans, until you've talked to your lawyer. You'll have plenty of opportunity to speak your piece then. Come along. No. No, if you don't let me talk now, Fred. Just, just a moment, please. Yes, Doc? I think she'll tell us the things we want to know now, Captain. Yes. Very well, Mrs. Evans. Who murdered Robinson? He did. Fred did. He said we could get away with it. He made me pick up the phone so my fingerprints were on it. He put my handkerchief in the rubbish oh, chair. Oh, fool. You know what'll happen to you? Yes, I know. I'll go to jail for being a bigamist. But I won't go to the chair. You tried to frame me, Fred. I should have known I was a fool not to have realized. Take it easy, Commander. Well, Captain, looks as though our little scheme worked rather well, doesn't it? Yes. Two confessions without half trying. What do you mean, two confessions? I'm confessing nothing. It won't make any difference whether you do or not, Fred. Oh, why is it, by the way, that Anita keeps calling you Fred when your name is Henry? Why, why, she... Don't embarrass yourself by trying to explain, Evans. You see, we've known right from the start that you're not Commander Henry Evans. You're his brother, Fred Evans. That's a lie. I've got the papers to prove it. Tom Evans, why don't you give up trying to be a super criminal? Your type is so common, it's amusing to watch your antics. Don't you know why we played along with you watching you try to pin this murder on Anita? No, I didn't. You can't prove a thing. Oh, yes, we can prove everything. It was much easier to hear Anita tell it. She's lying. She's trying to protect herself. Naturally, she is. Let me tell you what happened. After you murdered your brother, you knew your chances of getting away were slim, but you saw an out. You could pin the murder on Anita. You talked her into believing you both could get away with you posing as your brother. You threatened her. She had no alternative but to agree. As a matter of fact, you might have gotten away with it if you hadn't been so stupid. We'll still get away with it. You can't prove I murdered Henry. Can't we? Listen, Evans, there were two shots fired. You had a gun and Henry had a gun. Do you know from which gun the bullet came that killed Henry? It didn't happen that way. Anita It had... was your gun, Evans. We dug a bullet out of the wall up there. We know which gun it came from. Oh, you do? Well, now you're going to find out which gun this bullet is coming from. Get out, Doc! There isn't any need to look out, Captain. I emptied the bullet from his gun a long time ago. The fact is, Captain, this man is about the stupidest criminal I've ever come across. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... <laughs> now for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danforth. You know, there's one thing I like about these cases. What's that, Miss Fairfax? Oh, it's coming back here to the studio, lighting up the fire, and sitting around talking about it. Well, then how about making a noise like a hostess and throwing some of that mission orange drink, will you? Oh, don't be so anxious. I'm getting it. <laughs> ah, great girl, your secretary, Doc. I know it, Captain, but uh, don't tell her I do. Did uh, I hear my name mentioned? Probably. Captain and I like to gossip when you're out of earshot. Very funny, Dr. Danfield. Here you are. Thanks, Rusty. Captain Otis? Thank you, Miss Fairfax. Now, let's get down to business. How'd you know, Dan? Hmm? How'd I know what? 
listen to him. How do you know what? How did you know that Commander Evans was a phony? Oh, well, uh, well, I was in the Marines. You know. Stop bragging and tell us the answer. Well, the answer is pretty obvious, Rusty. A sailor or a Marine, especially one just off his ship, doesn't speak of his ship as a boat. Say, that's right. A sailor always refers to his ship as a ship. Boat is a landlubber's term. Exactly, Captain. Also, a sailor refers to his luggage as gear. He doesn't call it a grip. That's yeah. right, too. The alleged Commander Evans said he had a gun in his grip. All the sailors I know refer to their luggage as gear. What is that, Rusty? I said all the sailors I know refer... That's what I thought you said. I didn't know you knew any sailors. Didn't know I knew any... <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> well... You're jealous. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, Captain Ellis, would you mind if... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I understand, Doc. I'll be uh, shoving off in a minute. <laughs> Thank you. You know, Miss Fairfax seems to think that sailors have an edge on Marines. I intend to correct that impression. 